so let us see what are the steps of carrying out the next generation sequencing so again pay a lot of attention so the first step is fragmentation of cellular dna or spatial separation so for example this one which is shown in brown okay this is the dna genome of interest okay so what we are going to do we are going to break it we are going to fragment it okay so there's a dna fragmentation so this is the dna fragments that we are seeing and this individual dna fragment is serving as a template okay now now what we do now to this individual dna fragment we are attaching certain adapters okay so dna adapters are attached and we are getting multiple such dna fragments with attached dna adapter so this dna adapter it is complementary to the primers which is a short oligonucleotide which is a short oligonucleotide so i hope you have understood till this point after this the next step in ngs is local amplification so after separation the individual dna molecules they are amplified using limited number of pcr cycles okay so amplification is necessary so that sufficient signal can be generated to ensure detection and accuracy okay so it is very important after separation the individual dna molecules that you have got they are basically amplified using limited number of pcr cycles it is necessary so that sufficient signal can be generated to ensure detection and accuracy so once the signals have been amplified so there are number of glass slides or there is a solid surface so these are called as solid surface and such solid surface they are having the primer so the one which is shown in pink this is basically a primer and oligonucleotide as i told you there is a primer and this primer is basically complementary to the adapter the black color adapter so this is the black color adapter okay this is the black color adapter to which this nucleotide is complementary so as you can appreciate over here so this particular you know uh, uh, complementary primer is complementary to this black color adapter molecule so the denatured dna it is captured on the solid surface that is the glass slide via complementary base pairing between the dna adapter and the primer which is the oligonucleotide now the parallel sequencing will start now whatever i am showing you over here that is for one dna fragment and simultaneously such sequencing is taking place in thousand such dna fragment so i am taking an example of only a single fragment a dna fragment where the sequencing is happening so for example this is the 3 prime end to the 5 prime end this is the adapter molecule that i showed you and this is the dna fragment okay so what is happening over here okay they are basically going and they are attaching to this universal primer or the oligonucleotide sequence which is which was present on this solid surface okay so this particular adapter so this uh, in black this is the adapter molecule this adapter molecule is complementary to the universal primer as we can appreciate over here and from here the oh end is there and the the sequence is going to elongate over here so what we are going to do over here we are using the four color different fluorescently labeled nucleotides with a reversible chain blocking group attached to all the nucleotides so we are using a four color different fluorescently labeled nucleotides with a reversible chain blocking group attached to all the nucleotides okay so for example over here i'm just taking an example for example at this end okay we are adding c a t this is the basic sequence in the dna template now for example in in the first uh, in the first only in the c so complementary to the c in the template strand over here there was the primer so the first sequence or the first uh, nucleotide which is attached is the guanosine now over here they are having a reversible chain blocking group which is going to stop the chain at that point there is a reversible chain blocking group okay and you can see over here shown in blue there are they are having a particular color fluorescence okay they are having a particular color fluorescence so they are fluorescently labeled and they also have a reversible chain blocking group so what will happen once a nucleotide is going to bind over there okay they are going to block the chain over there only okay and they are also going to give some fluorescence myself dr jibran amad presents to you simply pathology and today we are going to read about molecular genetics diagnosis okay and we are mainly going to discuss about the sequencing techniques including next generation sequencing so what are the indications of molecular genetic diagnosis number 1 analysis of inherited genetic alterations so for example in prenatal or in fetus for example if the mother has an advanced age okay so advanced maternal age is one of the reasons for carrying out molecular genetic diagnosis or a parent known to carry a balanced chromosomal rearrangement which increases the risk of aneuploidy or 
fetal anomalies if they are basically detected on ultrasonography or routine maternal blood screening which is indicating an increased risk of down syndrome or another trisomy now prenatal testing to be considered for children at known risk for many other genetic disorders example cystic fibrosis spinal muscular atrophy using targeted analysis based on familial mutation or family history so how prenatal testing is done it is done by amniocentesis or chorionic villus biopsy or umbilical cord blood okay so basically these are the samples for carrying out prenatal testing okay now beyond prenatal testing parents who are known to be at risk for having a child with genetic disorder so a parent who is already having a child affected by down syndrome so those parents they can choose to have genetic testing performed on the embryos in vitro prior to uterine implantation okay so this was the indication in prenatal or in fetus okay for carrying out molecular genetic diagnostic or testing now in case of newborns or in case of children what are the indications so if the newborn is born with multiple genetic anomalies or there is a suspicion of metabolic syndrome or there is an unexplained mental retardation and or developmental delay or there is a suspected aneuploidy okay with features of down syndrome or other syndromic chromosomal uh, abnormalities like patau syndrome etc okay in older patients in older patients what are the indications for diagnosis so inherited cancer syndrome if there is a family history or an unusual cancer presentation for example if you see angelina jolie in her family okay they are having that braca gene mutation and therefore they have an increased risk of development of not only breast carcinoma but also ovarian carcinoma so if the older patient okay if they have if there is a family history of any cancer syndrome then they ought to get tested or they are atypically mild monogenic disease example attenuated cystic fibrosis or there is a neurodegenerative disorder example there is a history of familial alzheimer's disease or huntington's disease so these are the indications okay in older patients okay in older patients so these are all the indications for analysis of inherited genetic alterations in fetus newborns and children and in older patients so now what are the indications okay for carrying out molecular testing in case of acquired genetic alterations for example number 1 is cancer okay so cancer is an acquired condition okay so basically uh, it is helpful okay so molecular analysis is helpful for the detection of tumor specific acquired mutation for example in sporadic colorectal carcinoma okay for example uh, that apc gene mutation is there so for detection of such mutation okay so detection of tumor specific acquired mutation and cytogenetic alteration that are hallmarks of specific tumor for example bcr abl fusion gene which is seen in case of cml okay or for example uh, pml rara gene which is seen in case of acute um, promyelocytic leukemia apml then determination of clonality as an indicator of a neoplastic condition so sometimes we wish to understand whether a particular uh, swelling or whether a particular uh, you know growth whether it is neoplastic or non neoplastic so that can be determined by knowing the clonality of the particular lesion okay and for carrying out the and for knowing the clonality okay we have to carry out certain molecular testing then determination of a specific genetic alterations that can direct therapeutic choices okay example her2 amplification in breast carcinoma or egfr mutation in lung cancer okay so specific gene alteration are present uh, you know they are directing specific therapeutic uh, you know uh, choice for example any breast carcinoma which is showing her2 amplification they are candidates for receiving trastuzumab similarly any you know uh, lung ad adenocarcinoma patient with egfr mutation they are bound to get jeftinib as their first choice of therapy okay so for guiding the therapy we also have to carry out molecular analysis then determination of treatment efficacy for example mrd or minimal residual uh, disease detection of bcr abl by pcr in cml then determination of drug resistance okay uh, drug resistance causing secondary mutation so sometimes a patient okay can develop secondary mutations which can uh, lead to drug resistance so to uh, detect such uh, mutations causing drug resistance again is very important okay so again so these are the uh, you know indications of molecular analysis in acquired genetic alteration that is in cancers then in case of infectious disease so for detection of microorganisms like hiv 
ह्यूमन पैपिलोमा वायरस माइक्रो बैक्टीरियल वी आर डूइंग द सीबी नेट न्यूक्लिक एसिड एम्पलीफिकेशन टेस्ट देन फॉर हार्पीज फॉर कोरोना वायरस द आरटीपीसीआर दैट वी आर डूइंग देन आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ स्पेसिफिक जेनेटिक अल्टरेशंस इन जीनोम्स ऑफ माइक्रोब्स दैट आर एसोसिएटेड विद ड्रग रेजिस्टेंस ओके डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट एफिकेसी दैट इज असेसमेंट ऑफ वायरल लोड्स इन एचआईवी ईबीवी हेपेटाइटिस सी वायरस इंफेक्शन ओके सो दीज आर ऑल द इंडिकेशंस फॉर कैरिंग आउट the molecular uh, you know uh, analysis for molecular genetic diagnosis so these are all the indications which are actually requiring molecular testing okay for diagnosis okay. now very importantly there are two kinds of tests that we are doing so when uh, the when the alteration is not that big and it is involving only a certain part or sequence of dna we are carrying out certain sequencing testing okay so today's topic of discussion is mainly concerned with the different kinds of sequencing studies like we will see sanger sequencing pyro sequencing single base primer extension restriction fragment length analysis next generation sequencing along with amplicon length syn analysis okay so these are the different kinds of sequencing that is available and we are mainly going to discuss each one of them just remember the two of the sequencing methods one is the sanger sequencing okay these as well as the next generation sequencing okay so these can be asked as a long answer question or they can be asked as a short note in the exam so today we are going to understand a very very important yet difficult topic okay that is sanger sequencing next generation sequencing so play please pay a lot of attention okay so always remember before you analyze a particular dna sequence you need to have enough amount of that dna or you need to have the enough amount of amplified dna so what is the procedure of amplifying the dna we are carrying out pcr that is the polymerase chain reaction okay so this polymerase chain reaction basically amplifies the targeted dna or the dna of interest okay which is uh, you know uh, uh, in whom the alterations are suspected to be present okay so the pcr is used for the amplifying the targeted dna and then such dna is sequenced by various methods like sanger sequencing pyro sequencing single base primer extension restriction fragment length analysis amplicon length analysis next generation sequencing always remember this pyro sequencing it is also one form of ngs only it is also one form of ngs okay so kindly pay a lot of attention right now we are first going to start with the sanger sequencing and before i start with the sequencing studies it is very important for you to note if you have not read about the pcr testing so you are highly encouraged to first go and see the lecture on pcr and only after that you come and see this other uh, you know uh, the, the, uh, these uh, different sequencing studies okay so please go and see the pcr lecture before seeing these studies because you will not be able to make sense of, of all these different concepts first we are going to understand about the sanger sequencing so it is the most commonly used commercial dna sequencing which is named after sanger f that is the scientist who discovered this sequencing so what is the principle of sanger sequencing the dna replication by dna polymerase enzyme is selectively terminated using certain di deoxynucleotides okay these are called as di deoxynucleotides and each dna fragment is recorded at the terminal end to assess the dna sequence how it is done we will uh, let you know so what are the basic contents that are required for starting this test so first of all with the help of P pcr we are going to amplify the dna of interest okay so amplified dna which is uh, serving as the substrate or the raw material along with that we are requiring dna polymerase now what is the use of dna polymerase they are going to elongate the dna chain so if you have seen the lecture on pcr then you will be able to understand what is the use of dna polymerase then a dna primer is required along with that we have to provide the building blocks to extend the the uh, 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 the dna chain so for example d atp adenine guanosine cytosine thymine thymidine all these are required so different nucleotides or building blocks will be required along with that we are adding four dead end di deoxy terminator nucleotide so it can be di deoxy atp ttp gtp or ctp okay and such uh, you know uh, 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 di deoxy terminator nucleotides they are labeled with different fluorescent tags so whenever whenever any such di deoxy nucleotide i am not talking about the normal nucleotides whenever such di deoxy nucleotides they will be incorporated into a chain that chain will terminate okay 
that chain will terminate. So, because the chain will terminate, therefore, DNA fragments of all possible lengths will be produced and each labeled with a fluorescent tag. So, wherever the chain is ending, there is a particular dideoxy terminator nucleotide. Okay, so wherever the chain is ending, there will be this and they are basically fluorescent labeled. So, what is going to happen that they are labeled with a fluorescent tag and they and that particular fluorescent tag, when laser light is going to fall, they are going to give certain kind of fluorescence. Okay, and that uh, basically fluorescence is will, will correspond to the base at which the reaction stopped because of the incorporation of one of the terminator nucleotide. So, uh, you will get DNA fragments of different length. After separation, after size separation by capillary electrophoresis, the exact sequence can be read and compared with the normal sequence to detect the presence of mutation or any kind of genetic alteration. Now, I know that you have not understood anything. So, please pay a lot of attention. Now, I am going to explain the concept in details with the help of this diagram. Okay. So, first of all, for example, let us see that this is the sequence of interest. Okay. So, this A, T, C, C, T, G. This is the sequence of interest that I am going to study and I want to see whether any alteration is present in this particular sequence. So, pay a lot of attention over here. So, what are the raw products or what are the substrates that is required? So, we are requiring a DNA template. So, this is basically providing the DNA template. Okay. That is the DNA of interest and we have already amplified this sequence with the help of PCR. Okay. Now, we have given a primer which is going to basically attached at the uh, end and uh, we, are have a, we are having a DNA polymerase which are going to elongate the chain. So, what is happening over here that basically this is the chain and now two types of nucleotides are added. One is the normal adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymetidine is added and another one is the dideoxy adenine, guanosine, cytosine and thymidine. So, whenever these units are added, the chain is going to elongate. But whenever these units are added, the chain is going to terminate. So, for example, in the first cycle, what has happened over here? That in the first cycle, for example, uh, in, in the very first place only, okay, a dideoxy nucleotide that is uh, uh, the thymetidine, okay, they have basically uh, 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 incorporated at this, uh, you know, against uh, this. So, they are complemented to this A. So, because they are dideoxynucleotide, so the chain terminates and this is what we get, okay. In the second cycle or in the, sec in the second cycle, what is happening? So, against this, again the cycle starts. So, one T, one normal T is incorporated. After that, one dideoxyadenine uh, 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 nucleotide is added. So, as a result, the chain terminates again and we are getting a chain of length corresponding to this. Again, the third time when the cycle is running, okay, so the chain again starts, okay, with the help of primer and the DNA polymerase, the chain elongates. So, one thymetidine, one adenine is added and along with that, one dideoxynucleotide is added. So, we are getting a DNA fragment of this particular length, okay. Similarly, if you see over here, okay, the chain elongates and again, they encounter one uh, uh, dideoxynucleotide, the chain terminates, again, we are getting this chain. So, as a result, what we are seeing over here, what we are seeing over here, as a result, we are seeing that we are getting a particular chain, okay. We are, get, we are getting DNA fragments of different lengths. So, by this process, DNA fragments of different length is basically obtained. And all these DNA fragments, they are subjected to capillary gel electrophoresis, okay. They are subjected to capillary gel electrophoresis, okay. So, all this particular, you know, in the increasing order, okay. So, they are arranged in the increasing order of the length. So, the sequence is read from the smallest DNA fragment to the largest fragment, okay. So, from the smallest to the largest, the sequence is basically read as we can appreciate, okay. And all these DNA fragment, they are subjected to capillary gel electrophoresis, okay. And because the terminal one is fluorescently labeled, so they are basically when laser beam, they are basically when they are subjected to the laser beam, then they are fluorescing, okay. So, what is happening? They are subjected to capillary gel electrophoresis which is hit by laser beam. Okay. So, the terminal base tagged with the fluorochrome dye emits fluorescence when it is hit by the laser beam and four color emission spectra from four different bases are recorded. Okay. So, this is giving one type of fluorescence. This is giving another type of fluorescence. They are giving another type of fluorescence. This is giving another type of fluorescence. All such fluorescence signals, they are recorded. And ultimately, the software will finally translate the sequence of the terminal bases 
in the DNA target chain and ultimately you are going to get this particular sequence. Okay, You are going to get this particular sequence and this is basically the sequence that is complementary to the main. So, if you basically, if you basically uh, uh, just do the complementation, so T for T there will be A, for A there will be T, for G for C, for G again C will be then for C there will be G. So, you will get what is known as the original sequence. So, this is called as the sequencing study wherein you are getting the original sequence. Okay. So, what is very important if you see over here, okay, just try and pay attention over here. So, if you see over here, what was the original sequence if you see? The original sequence, if you see, this was the original sequence A, T, C, C, T, G. This was the, this was supposed to be the original sequence, okay. But uh, whatever sequence that was present in the sample, if you see, in that sample, this particular T wasn't present. So, as a result, we did not get a chain, okay, which was incorporating something that is A against of this T. So, as a result, as a result, we got a sequence which is having A, T, C, C and G, but we are not having a corresponding T over here. We, did, we do not have a corresponding T. So, this T was not present. So, therefore, whatever sequence was present in the sample, when compared with the original, they were lacking this particular T. So, as a result, we can detect such sequence alterations at a particular position. And in this way, the exact sequence of the bases in the DNA is generated. I know this is a difficult concept to understand, but kindly you, you see the video again and again so that you can understand the concept fully. Now we are going to understand the sequence is basically read as I told you from the smallest band to the largest band as we can appreciate over here. From the smallest DNA fragment to the largest DNA fragment we are seeing. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this method? So, the Sanger sequencing, it is highly specific in nature. It is now replaced by next generation sequencing, especially when large genes or multiple gene sequencing is required. Okay? But remember that Sanger sequencing still it is considered the gold standard sequencing. Okay? Now, uh, the drawbacks are it is quite a clumsy process. It is very cumbersome and it is a time consuming process and has a very high cost. Coming to the pyro sequencing, now this pyro sequencing was there in the, in the 9th edition of Robbins, but in the latest 10th and 11th edition of Robbins, this pyro sequencing is not included. Why? Because this process is very much uh, replicating the NGS concept and therefore, uh, some, you know, some of them consider this process as NGS, but still I am teaching it separately because this might be asked as a short note in your exam. So, what is the principle? If you see here, Fixed amount of inorganic pyrophosphate is released when a nucleotide is incorporated into a growing DNA strand. So, fixed amount of inorganic pyrophosphate is released when a nucleotide is incorporated into a growing DNA strand. Now, this inorganic pyrophosphate will initiate a chain of reaction that liberates light energy which is detected by CCD camera which is a color charge device which is acting as a photo detector. Okay? So, what are the raw materials for this reaction? Amplified DNA from where it will come? PCR. Again, I am telling you that you have to read about the PCR before you jump into the sequencing studies. Okay. So, you will see the amplified DNA. Then you will see the single sequencing primer is added along with that cycling individual nucleotides one at a time. So, again A, C, T, G which are acting as a building blocks. Again, certain enzymes are required in this process. DNA polymerase, sulfurylase, luciferase is required plus the substrate is there. So, what is the substrate over here in this reaction, which is APS, that is adenosine phosphosulfate, APS as well as luciferin. Okay, so basic concept over here is what? That for example, we are doing a sequencing study. So, for example, this is the sequence of interest from, uh, uh, you know, we have got from the PCR. Now, a primer is added over here and now the DNA polymerase will keep on adding, 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 adding a particular nucleotide. So, the concept over here is that whenever a nucleotide is added, some amount of light energy is given out in the form of inorganic phosphate. Okay, And this light energy is converted into a pyrogram from where the sequence can be deciphered by the software. Okay, So, depending on which type of nucleotide is incorporated, different amount of inorganic phosphate and therefore, different amounts of light energy is, is, is basically released. For example, adenine will release some certain different amount of inorganic phosphate cytosine will have different, thymidine will have different, guanosine will have different. So, incorporation of nucleotide into the DNA strand. So, whenever the nucleotide is incorporated into the DNA strand, inorganic pyrophosphate is released 
in presence of the substrate that is APS and the enzyme ATP sulfurylase, inorganic pyrophosphate is converted into ATP and this ATP in the presence of luciferin which is converted to oxyluciferin and the enzyme luciferase, light energy is released and this light energy will be detected by the CCD cameras which are acting as the photodetectors and then a pyrogram is generated from which the DNA sequence can be deciphered. So, the DNA sequence is assessed by with the help of a pyrogram. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this test? So, it is more sensitive as compared to the Sanger's method and it can detect as little as 5% of the mutated alleles in the background of normal allele. Therefore, it is used to analyze the DNA which is obtained from cancer biopsy in which the tumor cells are often contaminated with large number of admixed stromal cells. Again, it is very fast and it is cheaper compared to Sanger sequencing and simultaneous sequencing of multiple DNA samples is possible with the pyro sequencing. But one disadvantage is that it is quite error prone in comparison to the Sanger's method. Now, all these advantages okay, of pyro sequencing is very much like the NGS. Okay? And pyro sequencing is one form of NGS only. Now, coming to the next type of sequencing study that is the single base primer extension. It is done to identify the mutations at a specific nucleotide position. So, they are detecting a specific point mutation. For example, there is an oncogenic mutation in the codon 600 of the BRAF gene. So, over here, what we will do an interrogating sequence, uh, uh, sequencing primer. It is added to the PCR product. Now, PCR product is nothing but the DNA of interest which is basically amplified. Okay, So, an interrogating sequencing primer which will bind just one base upstream of the target. Now, differently colored terminator fluorescent nucleotides are then added which is corresponding to the normal and variant basis. Nucleotides complementary to the mutant and the wild type basis at the queried position are labeled with different fluorophores such that incorporation will yield fluorescent signals of varying intensity based on the ratio of mutant to wild type DNA which is present. So, I know you have not understood anything till now. So, I will explain you with the help of diagram. So, what is very important? For example, this single base primer extension is very important for knowing individual, you know, sequence alterations. So, there is a particular point where certain alterations or certain deletion or addition or certain. So, instead of G, uh, an adenine was there, for example. So, what is happening? This is the DNA of interest from where have I got this? By PCR, we have amplified this. Then a primer will is going to bind with the initial place. Okay, it is going to guide where the chain extension will start. And at this particular place, okay, at this particular place, for example, if guanine is there, the complementary will be C. For G, there is C. So, what is going to happen? If guanine is there, then, then the complementary will be C. And this fluorescently labeled nucleotide will, will go and bind over here. So, the primer is just going to bind till some place which is just upstream of the place of or point of interest or the point where of uh, uh, you know uh, alteration is there that is also called as the point of interrogation so just after that the nucleotide will be added so if the cytosine is going and binding okay that is basically indicating more amount of of this uh, dna with this and the chain is going to stop over here okay so more amount of chain okay which is ending with the c okay that is basically pointing that the normal guanosine is there okay so wild type is more now, for example, instead, instead over here, instead, uh, instead of guanine, which is normally present, if adenine is present, then the complementary sequence to the ad, ad, adenine will be thymidine. So, basically, what is going to happen that over here, after the primer, at the point of interrogation, the uh, thymidine, uh, uh, you know, nucleotides will bind and the chain is going to terminate. So, more amount of mutant DNA will be there. Now, for example, there is a patient where they have some amount of of DNA which is ha having uh, guanosine and some amount which is having adenine which is having the mutation. So, you will have you know mixed wild as well as mutant type. Remember wild type DNA means they are talking about normal DNA. Mutant one which is showing some kind of mutation. So, I hope you have understood this concept very clearly. I will just repeat once more so that you understand this concept very nicely. So, in this concept we are basically uh, interested to find the point of interest, okay, point of interrogation and over here the a point of interest is affecting a single position. Now, normally there is guanosine and normally what is going to happen, this is the DNA of interest and from where we are getting this amplification by a PCR. So, the primer is added which is going to bind just before this point of alteration and this point is called as point of interrogation. So, we have added fluorescently labeled nucleotide. 
Now, for example, if the normal guanosine is present, then the complementary sequence that is the, the cytosine is going to bind and more amount of wild DNA will be present. If, for example, instead of guanosine, we are having adenine. So, over here, the complementary sequence is this thymetidine and more amount of mutant DNA will be present. If, for example, the patient is having both kinds of samples, both normal as well as the mutant variety, so we will have a mixture of uh, the, this, uh, uh, you know, normal as well as abnormal DNA. So, I hope you have understood this concept. Next, we are going to see the advantage, disadvantage. So, remember the single base primer extension is very sensitive technique but has the disadvantage of producing only one base pair of sequence data. Okay. Now, we are going to understand about restriction fragment length analysis. Now, this is characterized by digestion. So, as you can see, the term is restriction fragment length analysis. So, over here it is characterized. So, from the PCR, we will amplify the DNA and whatever DNA of interest we are getting, we will digest the DNA with the endonucleases and such endonucleases are called as restriction enzyme. They will recognize and they will cut the DNA at certain specific sequence. If a specific mutation is known to affect a restriction site, the amplified PCR product will be digested. Okay, normal and mutant PCR products will yield fragments of different sizes and such, uh, you know, fragments, they are identified as different bands following electrophoresis. It is useful when causal mutations always occur at an invariant or at a fixed nucleotide position. I will repeat once again. So, what is happening over here? That's for example, uh, if a specific mutation is affected. Now, for example, I am just giving you an explanation. So, for example, this is the DNA of interest. Okay. And for example, normally, normally a particular enzyme that is called as a restriction enzyme normally will cut at this position. Now, for example, at this position, if there is a certain mutation. So, for example, instead of cutting over here, they will cut over here. So, once they will cut, normally, once they cut, they will get a length. This will be the normal length of the normal DNA strand. And in the DNA strand which is having the mutation, the cut is at a different position. So, thus the length will become altered. Okay, this is for the mutant DNA length. So, when you compare the length of the DNA, okay, with the help of electrophoresis, there will be a difference. Okay, as a result, the mutation will be identified in this particular manner. Now, we are going to understand a very, very important concept that is the next generation sequencing concept. And this concept is asked as a long answer question in the exams and 100% it will be asked in this year's exam and it has been asked in the previous years as well. So, please pay a lot of attention. It is little bit difficult to understand. Okay. Now, it is a new DNA sequencing technology which is capable of producing large amounts of sequence data in a massively parallel manner. Now, PCR Okay, PCR using primers for many different genomic regions is performed simultaneously and the resulting mixture of PCR products enriched for regions of interest are subjected to next generation sequencing. Next generation sequencing as compared to Sanger sequencing, it is more sensitive and can detect presence of mutations even if it is present in very small fraction of tumor cells or if the tumor cells are heavily contaminated with normal stromal cell. NGS allows us to perform previously impossible analysis at an extremely low relative cost. Why am I saying relative cost? Because even if it, if the, the cost is less, much less than Sanger sequencing, but yet the cost is much higher for the middle class population. Okay, for an average uh, NGS sequencing, around 1000 US dollar is required. That is coming up to approximately 80,000 rupees. Sanger sequencing has some input sample requirement, okay, and it requires single simple homogeneous template DNA. Whereas for NGS, no such input sample requirement is required, and therefore any DNA sample from almost any source can be used. Now, in Sanger sequencing, the samples with substantial heterogeneity produces uninterpretable results, okay. Whereas in NGS, in contrast, okay, it is well suited to analysis of heterogeneous DNA samples. So, let us see what are the steps of carrying out the next generation sequencing. So, again, pay a lot of attention. So, the first step is fragmentation of cellular DNA or spatial separation. So, for example, this one which is shown in brown, okay, this is the DNA genome of interest, okay. So, what we are going to do, we are going to break it, we are going to fragment it, okay. So, there is a DNA fragmentation. So, this is the DNA fragment that we are seeing and this individual DNA fragment is serving as a template, okay. Now, 
Now what we do now to this individual DNA fragment, we are attaching certain adapters. Okay, so DNA adapters are attached and we are getting multiple such DNA fragments with attached DNA adapter. So this DNA adapter, it is complementary to the primers, which is a short oligonucleotide, which is a short oligonucleotide. So I hope you have understood till this point. After this, the next step in NGS is local amplification. So after separation, the individual DNA molecules, they are amplified using limited number of PCR cycles. Okay. So amplification is necessary so that sufficient signal can be generated to ensure detection and accuracy. Okay. So it is very important. After separation, the individual DNA molecules that you have got, they are basically amplified using limited number of PCR cycles. It is necessary so that sufficient signal can be generated to ensure detection and accuracy. So once the signals have been amplified, so there are number of glass slides or there is a solid surface. So these are called as solid surface and such solid surface, they are having the primer. So the one which is shown in pink, this is basically a primer and oligonucleotide. As I told you, there is a primer and this primer is basically complementary to the adapter, the black color adapter. So this is the black color adapter. Okay. This is the black color adapter to which this nucleotide is complementary. So as you can appreciate over here, so this particular, you know, uh, a complementary primer is complementary to this black color adapter molecule. So the denatured DNA, it is captured on the solid surface that is the glass slide via complementary base pairing between the DNA adapter and the primer, which is the oligonucleotide. Now the parallel sequencing will start. Now whatever I am showing you over here, that is for one DNA fragment and simultaneously such sequencing is taking place in thousand such DNA fragment. So I am taking an example of only a single fragment, a DNA fragment where the sequencing is happening. So for example, this is the three prime end to the five prime end. This is the adapter molecule that I showed you and this is the DNA fragment. Okay. So what is happening over here? Okay. They are basically going and they are attaching to this universal primer or the oligonucleotide sequence, which is, which was present on this solid surface. Okay. So this particular adapter, so this uh, in black, this is the adapter molecule. This adapter molecule is complementary to the universal primer as we can appreciate over here. And from here, the OH end is there and thus the sequence is going to elongate over here. So what we are going to do over here, we are using the four color different fluorescently labeled nucleotides with a reversible chain blocking group attached to all the nucleotides. So we are using a four color different fluorescently labeled nucleotides with a reversible chain blocking group attached to all the nucleotides. Okay. So for example, over here, I'm just taking an example. For example, at this end, okay, we are adding C, A, T. This is the basic sequence in the DNA template. Now, for example, in, in the first, uh, in the first only in the C, so complementary to the C in the template strand over here, there was the primer. So the first sequence or the first uh, nucleotide which is attached is the guanosine. Now over here, they are having a reversible chain blocking group, which is going to stop the chain at that point. There's the reversible chain blocking group. Okay. And you can see over here shown in blue, there are, they are having a particular color fluorescence. Okay. They are having a particular color fluorescence. So they are fluorescently labeled and they also have a reversible chain blocking group. So what will happen once a nucleotide is going to bind over there, okay, they are going to block the chain over there only, okay, and they are also going to give some fluorescence. 